Hello, I'm Henry Catchpole, Features Editor for Evo Magazine, and this is the 2012 Geneva Motor Show. This is the new BMW M6. It's got the same twin turbo V8 that you'll find in the BMW M5. It looks very sleek, perhaps not quite as aggressive as some people would like for what is the fastest BMW now, 0 to 60 in 4.2 seconds. However, there is one very conspicuous bit of bling, the enormous brake calipers painted in something I hadn't seen before, gold. This is the new Jaguar XF Sport Brake. A few facts for you. It's stiffer than saloon, it's more aerodynamic than saloon, and it's got a bigger boot than a 5 Series apparently. A couple of other things, there's going to be no four-wheel drive version, so it's rear-wheel drive only, which is good. But sadly, it's also going to be diesel only, so no nice arty V8 petrols. This is the new Bentley SUV. Beyond that, I don't really know what to say. I don't think you can call it pretty. The wheels, well, they're massive 23-inch wheels. Inside, it's undoubtedly luxurious, but Really? This is the brand new Ferrari F12 Berlinetta. It's the most powerful V12 Ferrari ever made. It's uh, putting out 740 horsepower. It'll do 0 to 200 kilometers an hour, so that's what, 124 miles an hour in just 8.5 seconds. When it gets to that speed, this front bonnet is then acting like a front wing and it's channeling air through, you can see these, these gaps here, and actually creating downforce, 123 kilos of downforce. It's a smaller car than the 599 it replaces, and it should be absolutely amazing. This is the Mazda Takeri concept. If you're an intelligent person, which I'm sure you are, and you imagined it with slightly smaller wheels, different door handles, and different mirrors, then you would be really pretty close to the next Mazda 6, probably. We also know the next Mazda 6 is gonna weigh 100 kilos less than the outgoing car, put out 105 grams per kilometer of CO2, and you'll get 1,500 kilometers for a tank of fuel. This is the Lamborghini J, or Yotta, and it's extraordinary. It feels like I should be saying this is the Lamborghini Aventador Yotta concept, but I'm not. It's a one-off, but it's fully working. People have driven it, and it's already been sold to one lucky owner. There are too many details, really, to talk you through but what I will say is that from being conceived in January, people haven't slept for six weeks to make this car happen. This is the Range Rover Evoque Cabriolet. Clearly, it's not going to be everyone's cup of bovril, but they've played a bit of a blinder, I think, by putting it in such a muted sort of charcoal tone, because it plays down what is otherwise obviously quite a bling car. Can't say it's my sort of thing, but they'll probably sell them in the absolute bucket loads. This might have OPC badges all over it, but it is, of course, the new Vauxhall Astra VXR. It'll have to do battle with the Focus ST when it arrives in the UK. And lots of sort of highlights and spoilers and things on it, but what really caught my eye are these seats in here. Really, really well bolstered and quite a statement of intent, I think. This is a new Volvo V40. It's not admittedly a terribly Evo car, but there's something very intriguing about the way it's designed. Is it a hatchback? Is it an estate? I don't know, but I think it looks really quite cool. This is the Aston Martin V12 Zagato. It's a fantastic example of why most shows are really great. In the photos beforehand, it was all about that big gaping front grille. But when you're actually here and you can see it in the carbon fibre, you realise that the most extraordinary thing is this rear end, particularly these fantastically sculptural rear lights. The all new Porsche Boxster. Now, the most important thing about it in terms of design is the fact that it doesn't have to share its doors with the 911. The look is more Mini Carrera GT than ever, and I think the nicest design feature is in fact down at the rear where those rear lights cut into the rear spoiler. I can't wait to drive it. This enormous boot belongs, perhaps surprisingly, to a Morgan. It's the new Aero Coupe. It might look rather like the Supersport from before, but this section of the roof is now fixed, which makes it obviously a lot stiffer. The other thing you need to know is that it's actually slightly cheaper than the Supersport 2, coming in just under £100,000. As you can read there, this is the Maserati Gran Turismo Sport. It's replacing the S in the range, and although it's not vastly different, the changes you can see at the front are mostly taken from the Stradale. However, it's actually now more powerful than the Stradale, with the output up to 460 brake horsepower. 
This is the Citroen DS4 racing concept. We hope it's going to go into production, it certainly should do, it looks absolutely brilliant. I think the best thing about it, which they did on the DS3 racing as well, is they've got amazing use of carbon fibre for a car at this price point. Just look at this grille, all sculpted out of the black weave. I think it's really, really cool. Now, a lot of people might say that having this badge on this bigger Mini is really not the done thing. However, given that this is the car that their WRC rally car is based on, it's understandable they've got to do it and make a performance variant. This is the new Audi RS4. Its grille is matched only really by the Aston Martin Zagato in terms of size. It's also available only in estate form, or as Audi would have it, Avon. Arguably the most important piece of pin and free design at the Geneva Motor Show is the new F12 Bernaletta. However, they've also done this, the Campiano concept. It's got one door on the driver's side, two on the passenger side. You can see inside, it's got quite a lot of wood which is amazingly taken from the waters of Venice. This is the Peugeot 208 GTI concept. Now, I'm quite tall, so I tend to make things look little next to me regardless. However, it does look really, really compact, which is great in these days of cars seem to be getting ever bigger and heavier. Of course, we'll be hoping that it'll follow in the great tradition of Peugeot hot hatches, the 205 and the 106, and so far, it looks really, really good. This is the Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport VTS. As you can tell, it's an open top car, but it's got the engine and transmission from the Supersports, the very fastest of all the Veyrons. The other thing to note, and you can't see the springs and dams underneath, but here in this blue car, it's slightly extraordinary weave. All the body panels, as opposed to some of them, are now made from carbon fibre. This is the Infinity Emerge E concept. It's not very often that a Japanese car maker can rival the likes of Lamborghini and Ferrari for sheer visual drama but this certainly does it. The whole thing's carbon fibre, and apparently the design's inspired by a kimono dress. Frankly, I don't care what it's inspired by, it looks absolutely amazing.